I grew up in the Wenatchee Valley, graduated from Wenatchee High School in 2008, and then worked around here for a couple years, and then spent four years active duty in the Army, and then four years inactive duty. And during my inactive duty, I came back home, did two years here at WVC, and received my associate's degree, and then transferred over to Central Washington, or to Central in Ellensburg and received my bachelor's degree in cell and molecular biology. And while I was going to school, I worked at the Kittitas County Coroner's Office as an intern and at a funeral home, Johnson and Williams Funeral Home in Ellensburg as well. So I would go do the coroner side of things and then the funeral home side of things. So I kind of got a good overall view of both sides of the field and kind of what happens during the investigation and afterwards. Can you tell me a little bit about um, the coroner's role, what a coroner does uh, in the course of a, of a death investigation? Okay, so within the county, the coroner investigates every unexpected, unattended, and suspicious death within the county. And so what will happen is, for instance, let's say there's a welfare check, sheriff's office or police department respond, find somebody deceased, they'll call us, We'll show up, kind of investigate the scene alongside the sheriff's office, um, look for any wounds, any medical issues that we can see, or just kind of piece together the scene at what might have happened. And then <clears throat> after the scene, the decedent will go to the funeral home, and then we'll go down and do another external exam at the funeral home to be more thorough, make sure we didn't miss anything. And then it's a lot of paperwork. We come back, request medical records, talk to primary care physicians, talk to specialty physicians to kind of paint the whole picture of the person's medical history because we only know them from the scene whereas their primary care physician or doctor knows them very well throughout their entire life going to see that doctor. So then we work with them to try to determine the best cause of death that will go on the death certificate and manner of death. So, and that's for natural causes of course. And then you get ones where it is suspicious or suspected homicide and those are a lot more in depth have detectives come out from the respective agencies and investigate the scene itself where the decedent is the coroner's jurisdiction, just the body and the physical evidence on the body. So the coroner's office is really activated when a death occurs outside of medical supervision or under suspicious circumstances. Correct. So up until this year, 2022, there was no elected coroner in Douglas County. And as I mentioned, you were a deputy uh, working as the coroner for the prosecuting attorney's office. Officially, the prosecuting attorney was the coroner of Douglas County. So what change that led to this be to become an elected office? The biggest change would be population. Once you break the 40,000 population limit, RCW states that the county has to get a standalone elected coroner. And the standalone elected coroner is somebody who has to stand for election every four years. Correct. And this past election cycle, you ran wanting the job, had no opposition, so you didn't have the distraction of a competitive election. Correct. Was there something in uh, your background that, that made you feel like you would be a good fit for this job? Is there, was there something that uh, moved you toward coroner's work or forensic work or death investigation? Even from a young age, I wanted to be a coroner. And... It sounds odd, but I had a lot of family who were law enforcement within King County, Snohomish County. They were detectives. Some of them worked on the Green River Killer case. And so they would kind of share tidbits of information when we'd have Thanksgiving and Christmas. And so I just became kind of fascinated with it. And I always loved biology. And it's kind of the best of both worlds. You get to see the medical side of things and the investigative side of things. So you get to kind of play detective and I don't want to say doctor, but you get to kind of look, review the medical records and kind of piece things together from a medical standpoint as to what might have happened when the person passed. Were there any particular challenges in moving from uh, your post with the prosecutor's office to having a, a, a fully operational uh, coroner's office for Douglas County? Um, actually, not much. My boss has been very helpful and petition to get supplies, petition to get a new vehicle so we can respond and do our own removals. It was just a matter of building it all up. So I guess that would be the challenge, is just kind of figuring out what we needed and getting it ordered and taken care of. But the county and my boss have been very helpful with understanding that this is happening and we're going to get a corner and kind of doing everything they can to help us out and build it from the ground up. 
Up until this uh, year, I think you said late summer, you didn't have a physical office that was your very own. Uh, you were situated in, I think, in Waterville? Uh, no, I was actually at the 19th Street building, the new Law and Justice building. And I had a small office, but I shared the whole space with a couple of the prosecuting attorneys. Since we were attached to their office, that's where I was at. And it was just a small office space. I didn't have any storage. Um, when I first got here, we didn't have a vehicle. All I really had was a scene kit and a camera, and that was about it. And so we were building up all the documentation, all the supplies, everything we would need, and we just kind of outgrew that space really quick. Other things I think that you mentioned earlier are in the process of changing. You're establishing relationships with other departments who can help you get your job done. So can you tell me a little bit about some of the relationships that you're working on? So we work very closely with the Douglas County Sheriff's Office and the East Wenatchee Police Department, and then not as closely, but with the fire department, EMTs, kind of everybody who responds to a death. So what will happen is it will be fire first usually, and then paramedics, and then sheriffs, and then if the person is deceased, they'll call us. So we kind of work with them a lot, and a lot of times we'll rely on the sheriff's office and police department to kind of step in and perform the duty of the coroner for a while. If there's one, like let's say, it doesn't happen too often, but if we have scenes back to back, I'm out on a call and then we get another one, I'll have to ask the police department or the sheriff's office, say, hey, can you fill out this documentation and take photos for me and let me know your thoughts on it and then I'll review that all when I get back to the office. So we help each other out a lot and it's very nice to have them kind of stand behind us and be willing to help us. People may feel like they're familiar with the job of a coroner from TV, from different police shows or forensic shows. You're not a forensic scientist or a forensic medical expert. Um, those are aspects of the job. Uh, when you come across them, what do you have to do? Our biggest role is to determine kind of what happened at the scene. And if we believe that there's something suspicious or anything out of the ordinary, well, we'll schedule an autopsy. And so then we'll take the decedent over to either King County, Spokane County, any of the counties within the state that have an ME or have actual hired forensic pathologist. And then they'll conduct the autopsy and we'll observe and they'll kind of show us They'll take a section of the heart, for instance, and say, hey, right here you can see there's a big heart attack that happened, and here's some coronary artery disease, or here's a pulmonary embolism. And so the forensic pathologist is the one that actually performs the autopsy. We determine if there's one even needed or not. Can you think of uh, about how many deaths there are that occur in Douglas County that require the coroner's attention? So I only have data from last year and this year. I have the others, but it's kind of packed away. But last year we had 81 unattended deaths within the county that we investigated. And this year we just hit 100. This year so far. Are there categories of death that uh, you see that are of concern to you? Um, we hear a lot about, say, overdose deaths, mm -hmm. for instance, or uh, a rise in suicide. In Douglas County, are you seeing particular categories of death that are fluctuating or of more concern than others? Overdoses and suicides within Douglas County are fairly low, which is a good thing. That's also due to the fact that we don't have an actual hospital. So let's say someone overdoses on in Douglas County, and it, this could be up in Bridgeport as well, and paramedics arrive, maybe Narcan the individual, kind of resuscitate them for the time being and then transport them over to the hospital in Brewster or the hospital in Wenatchee. And so then if they die there, then that's a Schlan County or an Okanagan County jurisdiction call. So that kind of, so I'm not really sure at how many overdose deaths we would have if we did have a hospital. Right now I think we're at about five or six for the year, which is fairly low. And But the biggest concern is heart disease. We see a lot of heart disease, a lot of heart attacks, a lot of strokes. And so that, those really, and it's always, you can look through someone's medical records and they'll kind of be the telltale signs of they're at risk for this. And so those are the biggest ones, cardiac and pulmonary. Do you expect to uh, expand your office? Do you feel like you're going to need help from deputy coroners in the future? At some point, I would like to, either an on-call, part-time or full-time, whatever we can really make happen, just to give me relief from being on-call 24-7, 365. That's a tough position to be in. And we were trying to kind of steer clear of 
having the sheriff's office or police department handle a lot of the calls, we wanted to be able to respond to almost all of them. But given that it would be just me for the time being, that's tough. It's tough to be on call 24 seven. You can't really have a life because even just having the phone with you, it's kind of a stressor where you're like, what if something happens? I can't go to Seattle or Spokane or take a trip or vacation because what, what if you're gone and then you do get that homicide or you get that child death and you get something that you have to be at? It's just tough. So at some point in the future, I'd like to have somebody to help either on call part-time or full-time to help ease the caseload and just take the duty phone for a little bit. Have you identified kind of like the difficult parts of the job, uh, things that you know, kind of wear on you from having to perform those duties? Absolutely. It, uh, there's nothing worse than having to go notify next of kin. That is a tough thing to do. You're delivering about the worst news possible and it's usually at a terrible time. You're knocking on someone's door at seven, eight, nine o'clock at night, letting them know that their loved one was just found dead, involved in a crash, overdosed somewhere, or just died naturally in their house. And so those are tough. That's extremely tough to do, just to kind of be the brunt of that emotion. And you never know how people are gonna react. There's always different stages of grieving and how people are gonna receive the news, but it's never easy, whichever process of grieving they go through, it's never easy. And then child deaths. Child deaths are tough. It's not the natural order of things, and it's just tough to have to go handle. So those are the two biggest things that really take its toll that are tough to handle. But there must be some rewards of the job, too, or you couldn't stay in it. So what, do you, what are those? <sighs> yeah, what's the word I'm looking for? The appreciation from the family. It's always nice when you help them kind of begin to get some closure and help them determine what the cause was and say, hey, this is what we found on scene. These are what we found in the medic records. This is really what we're thinking. Or you know, on autopsy cases, hey, this is what the pathologist said. And the families tend to be very appreciative of what you do. On occasion, you'll get some disgruntled people, but that's like with any business. It's just gonna happen. But for the most part, people are really appreciative and it's nice to help the families out. and the citizens within the county. Now there are some changes coming for the way county coroners have to do business in the year 2025. You mentioned some of those to me earlier. Can you explain what those changes will be? Yeah, so come 2025, every county within the state will have to have a coroner, whether it be appointed or elected. So for ones where the population is below 40, they're still gonna have to appoint a coroner. And there's accreditation coming down the pipeline that every coroner's office will have to be accredited through the International Association of Coroners and Medical Examiners. And a lot of this is documentation, paperwork, how you handle certain cases. Some of it is space that deals with having to have morgue space. Um, for instance, there's requirements to have separate coolers for standard case and then decomp cases supposed to have a scale to be able to weigh the decedent and have an exam room to where you can do your exams and if need be have a pathologist come perform an autopsy and so that's going to be a big hurdle in the next couple years is trying to get that because it it came quick and so every county other than the ones that are already accredited I think are going to be scrambling pretty quick to try to figure out how they're going to make this happen. Do the uh, death rates or the investigation rates in Douglas County uh, necessitate us having a morgue of our own at some point in the future? Oh, yes, just because I, right now we do all of our work out of the funeral homes. So I will transport the decedent to the funeral home. I'll stay there, I'll do my external exam there. I'll inventory clothes, inventory personal effects. I do everything at the funeral homes and we're just kind of in their space. I know they don't mind but we're still kind of in their way, whether they be trying to get embalmings done or they have funeral services or whatever they have going on, we're just kind of in the way and utilizing their space. So it would be nice to have something to where we can kind of call our own and do what we need to do. And then you could have the funeral homes okay, say, yeah, we're done with this case. You can come pick up this decedent and then the family can move forward with whatever they've arranged. Well, Tanner Bateman, Douglas County Coroner, thanks a lot for joining us today. Yeah, not a problem. Thanks for having me. You're watching the NCW Life Channel.